a lot of things to do with Battlefield 5 that need covering, but right now I only have the time and interest to cover a few of the most important. I haven't even played the alpha, mind you. I've been in Bolivia, studying and doing a little bit of tourism the last four weeks, so I'm just working off of gameplay footage and testimony from those who have had the opportunity to play the game. I'm going to be examining the following three topics in this video. First, gunplay, especially the new spread model and the time to kill. Attrition, which I consider the horrendous wrapper around an otherwise decent core of Battlefield 5, And finally, movement, with especially an examination of, well, the animations for literally everything in Battlefield 5. Let's start with spread. According to the producers, they're taking cues from the community and adding predictability to the weapons. According to them, they're going to be moving away from randomness with the weapons, with the mentality that where the weapons aims is where the bullet should go. This information is entirely catered to the normie. It was recognized that the term random bullet deviation by DICE was used to communicate the idea of spread that noticeably affects how your weapon performs against an enemy. This shouldn't be representative of the intricacies of spread, but it was good enough for a publication intended to communicate the basic idea to the community. What can we get from this? We do not have information now that suggests lack of randomness or lack of range limitation in the game, though it is possible that a reduction in these properties may occur, letting people have a bit more control with their guns. Rather, this is a question of communication, not a change in fundamental mechanics. To show people first that the weapon is inaccurate through recoil, before spread. Spread will be a secondary property of weapons. Spread will still be used to limit weapons to the range that they are intended for, but recoil will first show up before spread, giving players a clear visual understanding of when their weapon becomes inaccurate. Using nonsense terms like random bullet deviation to describe a concept that is apparently too difficult to be understood by even self-proclaimed commentators among the Battlefield community. Let's take a foremost example of this. But at some point, you gotta say to yourself, wait a minute, this is just kinda sucks. We, we can't do this. This is, this is not skillful. And this, this is not skillful. I'd like to be skilled to know when to tap and shoot a target. Like you, you might say, Doom, well, change your fire rate, make a tap, all right? Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Make, make a single fire, Doom, make a single fire. Oh yeah, I just made a single fire. This, ha Ultimately, this individual believes that the best justification for the reduction in random bullet deviation is apparently realism. Just to quickly engage with this argument as it is here presented because it is a very frequent one, my experience with the M4 and the M249 has been one of complete inaccuracy when firing full auto. The M4 is unusable on auto period, but the M249 on the other hand actually behaved a bit like Battlefield 1's LMGs. You had an initial jolt and flash which was off-putting, but the rate of fire at around, I'm gonna say 800-900 was constant enough from then on that it's just sort of a steady push which you can easily keep on target because of its weight. It's like a really high pressure garden hose that when you initially release the water it sort of jolts you back a little bit but then you have no trouble keeping on target since it's just a steady pressure. Same thing here is a garden hose but it shoots 556 five, instead of water. It really is kind of realistic. Basically we can use this as a representation of the kind of failure to engage in critical thinking when it comes to spread mechanics even among those who consider themselves influencers when it comes to the Battlefield franchise. Design policy apparently is now being dictated by people who don't understand anything. Deliberately using the wrong weapon for the task does not prove a point. If you really want to tap fire, you do have weapons like the Automat Fjordro and several weapons for the Assault class and Medic class which are good at that. LMGs are really fantastic at mid-range because of reverse spread, but you kind of have to play a weapon for its strengths. You don't try to use a soup spoon as a steak knife and then come running to me when things don't work out quite the way you want. Finally, I do have a little demo of just how useful tapping a high recoil LMG can be. But in the end, is this sort of mechanic competitive? I think that it can be. Mostly just because it makes the LMGs a fun and disparate class to play rather than just being clones of the ARs with bigger mags. My biggest regret in Battlefield 1 is not the fact that LMGs have negative spread increase, but the fact that there is a lack of existence of their positive spread counterparts in the assault rifle. Both together in one game, as we have in Battlefield 5, could have allowed us that option. 
So why all these changes to fundamental gameplay mechanics if they don't actually alter the way the game plays in a fundamental manner? Again, communication. That weapons might be a bit more mechanically interesting to use is of course weapon. However, the lack of spread alone, my bullets go where a point, is pretty much pointless to enhance the skill ceiling. Again, this is the fault of listening to people who do not think. Yes, we clearly need some communication changes so that people can actually understand what is going on with their gun. I do not believe that many people in the community are particularly stupid, I just believe that spread mechanics have been so badly communicated that even people who are generally pretty intelligent manage to misconstrue the actual issue. The failure to effectively disseminate information on how things actually work has bred an ill-informed sentiment that has misidentified the problem and misidentified its solutions. Battlefield 1 spread isn't actually all that excessive in the first place. A 6 round burst from the Automatico, which is now a middle of the road SMG for Battlefield 1, accumulates 0.495 spread. Compare that to a 6 round burst from the MX4, a middle of the road Battlefield 4 SMG, which accumulates 0.582. They were noticing the spread because they were tap firing consistently getting hit by the first shot multiplier. This is a badly communicated mechanic that makes weapons appear less accurate than they actually are when they are used and using them improperly is very easily done. To put it simply, removing spread does not inherently and magically breed a skill gap. That is, if your random spread is just replaced by random recoil, why is this any different? So you can see your screen shaking around instead of just your tracers going to different spots? Again, communication, not an actual lack of skill gap. Fortunately for us, the clamoring of the masses is tempered by some smart people at DICE who seem to have a cohesive vision on how to make the game more interesting. Drunksy has said a few things on the topic, though its details remain hidden from the most of us. It's been stated that spread and recoil mechanics in general had been overhauled, but what's different? First, we have predictable recoil patterns, which aren't fully yet implemented. In other words, it's not the same sort of general drift tendencies that we saw in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, but rather a pattern. A weapon goes to the left and then to the right, for example. The mechanics in play will include recoil increase per shot. Every time you fire a shot, your recoil, horizontal and vertical, or perhaps both, will increase, spread increase per shot, as we've had in prior titles, and spread first shot multiplier, again as we've had in prior titles. Every iteration of the franchise we get more and more subsystems. Spread will still exist, but according to Drunksy it will affect you less in every case than recoil will. In general, a gun can be controlled through time and investment. You can pick a gun, you can play with it, you can learn how it works and get pretty darn good with it. Time to kill seems to feature 3 and 4 bullet kills on automatic weapons, but don't get complacent if you like this sort of thing. If you like TTK 2.0 in Battlefield 1, which is pretty great. I heard it was being considered that we'd be saddled with another a game with 5 bullet kill 500 RPM SMGs. Please know, a discussion of what makes a good time to kill range is beyond the scope of this video and I've already got plenty of topics on this. Did I however notice an unusually steep drop off in weapons? That's probably the result of the game's uh, interesting spread models. If you have very little spread you're probably going to have to make up for that by having weird uh, bullet drop off. As a whole, it's a little bit early to make a good evaluation since we're still waiting on a lot of the mechanics to become available, and we don't all know what guns will be featured in the final product. With the existence of some spread, it's so far possible that we might end up with very good gunplay. As far as I can tell, the gunplay seems very logical to the end user and makes a lot of sense in the data. Very solid, I would say. The bullet to kill shift points seem annoyingly close, but the product seems to be performing reasonably well according to those who have played it. Range extension? is quite possible and it's viable to engage an inferior player at ranges far beyond your intended engage range. A fact that was in fact true in Battlefield 1, but harder to see due to the badly communicated spread mechanics. Moving on to attrition, I'm not a fan. Basically it's a terrible wrapper that seems to encompass an otherwise good core. It prevents people who want to play their shooter from enjoying the shooter aspects of the game by limiting their ability to play. Preventing them from winning 1v1s after the first engagement, and even just straight up shooting back once they've used up their two mags. It's like PUBG, you've got some entertaining gunplay, but it's wrapped in terrible mechanics and aspects that make them entirely unfun. Regeneration is accomplished in stages, never to full. This is, uh, this is a dependency on people who do not care. You're forcing players who do care about their game and do care about the performance and really want to win. The goal of forcing team play, I believe, is a flawed approach. I think right now you're punishing people where you should be rewarding them instead. Well, you've got a lot of stick in this game right now, I think you need more carrot, and probably less stick too. 
The game needs to be able to implement a loop where you spawn, where once you spawn, you start gathering more stuff if you do well, and the more you stay alive and do good, the more you get. And you reach a point where you want to stay alive instead of just wanting to, you know, run into a flag, die, get your ammo and meds back, get your ammo and health back, and then repeat the whole process again. Don't penalize the lone wolf, it just makes it frustrating for the players who inevitably will run into those teammates who don't care about the game. Rather, you should be rewarding team play effectively. And mind you, team play is not just a set of checkboxes, one assault, one support, one medic. Rather, this is a group of people working together to achieve a common goal, regardless of what archetypes they are playing. Using Battlefield 1 classes, let's take a look at some examples of this. Let's say you have a scout and assault. The scout player is able to put down flares, and the assault uses those flares very effectively with his close quarters weapons. But no, wait a minute, you can't do that in Battlefield 5 because you don't have a medic and you can't heal. And as soon as the assault player finishes one engagement, he's just going to die on the next one. If you have an assault and a support player for infinite ammo and good close quarters performance, and as well the ability to have infinite anti-tank engagement capabilities, no, you can't play that either, too bad, get over it. Because you don't have a medic and you can't regenerate, neither of you can regenerate. It is my opinion that this limits team play. Oh, but yes, you just have those resupply locations that you can go back to all the time. Well, if these resupply locations are a nod to the fact that you cannot always rely on teammates, I ask you, why implement this terrible system in the first place when you could replace these fixed resupply locations with a regeneration system, have effectively the same gameplay, but minus the annoying requirement that you go back to a resupply location after every engagement? For the last time, I'm not anti-team play, I just believe that this system limits team play, limits your options, and prevents you from playing with other people the way that you want to play. It forces you to have a certain squad composition in order to actually do anything, and I don't believe that this is particularly uh, good for the game. I don't want team play to be limited with stupid parameters constructed by people who don't understand how to play the game. It seems like you're taking the enjoyment out of what could be a good game by preventing people from being able to well, it's a shooter game from being able to shoot. It's a lot more fun to be able to seek out engagements than it is to be constantly running back to a supply location. Again, if the point of the resupply location is just to take people out of the combat for a few moments, what is wrong with a regeneration system? What's the difference between running back to a point and resupplying up again, and just sitting in a corner and waiting for your health to regenerate, or even moving to another flag and waiting for your health to regenerate? In both cases, you're out of commission for a few moments, but the latter system is far more interesting and dynamic than the former. A point I would like to bring up, though, it seems like from watching gameplay that health was basically instantaneously replenished on interacting with one of those boxes on the flags, and I ask, uh, what's stopping people from just camping this and continuing to heal and continuing to resupply and just sitting around the box all game? That's my question. There are some carrot approaches to the whole team play thing, but instead of the reward being intrinsic, which is a one game, you get these glorified kill streaks. You have squad support actions such as a V1, a flamethrower tank, and other things that the producers have been hyping. According to the producers, when something like a Churchill tank comes in, when they come in uh, and you're not playing a particular class, basically just leave. Great, that sounds like a whole lot of fun, having to rely on players who don't care to deal with a certain threat. Being completely unable to engage something and relying entirely on the actions of another player is not the foundation for a skill-based game, to put it simply. These support vehicles are apparently squad-specific and very powerful, and I'm sure this will be a whole lot of fun when you're a solo player playing against a clan stack. Berlin also says that it will perform well if a squad turtles up on a point. Ah, great. Sounds like a whole lot of fun for creating dynamic gameplay, especially if you're playing with puppies. That was sarcastic. It sounds terrible. On a positive note, the movement system seems like a good step forward and could potentially allow for some advanced tactics and shooting styles. In other words, a dev-sanctioned Zuzu jump that isn't quite as buggy. You can jump and fire all the way like in Battlefield 3. You can slide. They're not going to be slowing down your input like in Battlefield 1, so it's not incredibly annoying. But you do have a limited turn rate when sliding. You can't turn more than 90 degrees. But one comment I have on movement is that having animations for everything is inevitable to make hitboxes really janky, especially during common actions. Everybody knows that it's basically next to impossible to hit somebody that's vaulting or climbing into a tank in Battlefield 1, and I'm just concerned that having more animations for everything will increase the opportunity for these events to be happening. Lastly, on movement, please can we reduce the incoming hit flinch cam shakes? 
In Battlefield 3, yeah, your to weapon totally bounced around if you got hit while you were ADSing. But your point of aim never actually shifted. You should provide a player physical feedback when they're getting hit. But please don't shift their point of aim. It's kind of retarded to do so.